my friends, welcome back. If you are looking to be distracted, I've already distracted myself. My name's Angela Brand, if I forgot to say that. Welcome, hello, hi, glad to have you. If you are looking to be distracted from all of the serious things that are going on in the world right now and you just need a little bit of frivolous, fun, doesn't matter, doesn't have any real implications for anything all that important, we're just gonna talk about some kind of fun, frivolous things, this video is for you. If you feel like setting all your troubles aside and talking about some real random stuff, join me. Let's go. Get your coffee, get whatever you need, your tea. Let's have a moment where we set aside all of the struggle, the worry, the difficult things, and we just have a little fun for a few minutes talking about stuff we like to talk about. So this video is basically going to be sort of like my March edit. Unfortunately, I haven't really gone anywhere and done much of anything since March 11th. We went out for CR's birthday on March 11th, and that was the last time that I like got myself all dressed to go out and do something. And so I was like, you know what? I'm a, we're gonna go big or go home today, okay? We did full hair, red lipstick. I gave myself a, a spray tan, whatever, like with a glove, not a spray, but you know what I'm saying. Like, gave myself a little sunless tan, I'm wearing this cute top that I got from Thread Up. I think it was like seven bucks or something. Some big old hoop earrings. I even put on jeans. I even put on real pants, you guys. That is how you know I am making an effort in life. I painted my nails. Things are happening, people. Big things are happening. Like I'm sitting here on the couch in my office. <laughs> it doesn't matter. I feel better. And so this video is gonna be sort of like my March edit. I'm gonna share with you guys, if you've seen my previous edit videos, I share with you uh, some beauty stuff, sometimes some fashion stuff, um, books or podcasts or movies or anything like that. So that's what we're gonna talk about today. We're just gonna have a little fun, little March, little March edit. It is now April, but I got some stuff to show you. I got some stuff to share with you because despite the fact that I haven't gone many places, I do have some things that I've really been liking and just some, I don't really love the word self-care, so I don't wanna use the word self-care, but some pampering things. If you, like me, feel as though you just need to go all out for the hell of it, for no other reason than it just makes you feel better and makes you feel good that day, this is where we are at. Before we get into it, let me just add that if you're new here, I do all kinds of content here. Uh, I do a lot of, I have eight children, we have a big family, so, and we homeschool, so I share a little bit about homeschooling, I share about meal planning, uh, we do some grocery stuff, a little bit of like day in the life or routines, do budgeting stuff, all kinds of stuff here. It's a bit of a mishmash. So consider subscribing if you hear anything you like and you'd like to stick around. I'd love to have you. Consider subscribing, please. Okay, some of this stuff is going to be like your quarantine best friend, um, especially if you are not going all the places and doing all the things. I highly doubt you're washing your hair super frequently. I would argue that this is a great time to train your hair to not be washed as often. It's a great time to work on that um, because that is something you'd like have to train your hair to do. Anyways, I usually go about four or five days without washing my hair. I would love to stretch it longer. That seems to be the longest I can get it to go these days. However, I have found a new dry shampoo. It is completely gone. I actually just ordered a new one. I have never used a dry shampoo that works this well. That feels like a dramatic statement, but hear me out. This is the Chlorine. This is the Chlorine. Let me make sure I'm enunciating. Um, shampoo. Dry shampoo with oat milk, ultra gentle, all hair types, cleans without water. It does, they're not lying, okay? You know how some dry shampoos say that they like clean your hair or make your hair feel clean, but really they just give it like a grit and a texture, which is great. I do love, I don't have it with me today, but I do love a good texture spray. But when I want a dry shampoo, I want it to make it feel like my hair has been washed or cleaned. This stuff actually does that. Now it is pricey but I feel like you can be pricey when you do what you say you're gonna do. When you actually make my hair feel clean and not just like I sprayed some stuff in it and I'm gonna tease it and like hope for the best. When it actually makes your hair feel clean like you have very recently shampooed it, it's a good thing. So this Chlorine dry shampoo with oat milk, like I said, pricey, but if you are looking for a dry shampoo that will actually do what it says, this stuff is so good. I've tried a million different dry shampoos. This one by far, 
best thing I've ever used. We're gonna stay on the topic of some hair items really quickly because I have struggled for a long time with um, number one, thinning hair. Ever since I had the twins, I lost a ton of hair in that postpartum period. And I've just, it's never really come back. I, I did extensions for a while, tried that. I'm not, I'm not an extension person. It really bothered me that I couldn't like itch and scratch and just brush through my hair. All I wanted to do was just brush through my hair. I'm not an extension person. However, um, I had a lot of thinness and stuff around this area, um, especially here in the sides and stuff, and it was really bothering me. So that combined with also having a dry scalp. So the things I've been working on with my hair are thinning hair and a very dry scalp, specifically around my hairline. And when you have color treated hair, you have to be very careful what you use in terms of like clarifying and so you can't just go use head and shoulders it'll strip all the color out of your hair so my my skin is very dry i put a lot of oil on my skin but obviously i don't want to put a ton of oil in my hair my hairstylist told me about well first of all we'll start with the the thickening stuff so i started using a uh, shampoo and conditioner it is not nioxin nioxin is the one that they sell at ulta this one I did a little digging and found out through another YouTube channel um, that this stuff was really, really good and you could get it on Amazon. So I'll link that if you're interested. It smells very strongly of peppermint, but I do think that it works. I use it intermittently. I don't use it all the time, um, but I definitely have noticed a difference since I started using it in the thickness of my hair. So that's one of the products that I use to help thicken. And then the other thing that I use is this Okay, this is very pricey, just, it's by Orbe, which should have just like dollar signs as their logo, it should just be dollar signs, like we are gonna charge you a lot. But it's the Serene Scalp Thickening Treatment Spray. So I just put this, and this lasts me forever, 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 um, because I use so little of it. But I just take it basically and like lift my hair right here and spray it in just here, like on the sides and it makes such a difference when I blow dry and style my hair and making it look thicker in these front pieces. So combining that shampoo and conditioner occasional use with this helps a lot with the thickness in my hair. And then this stuff, I was kind of like, I was a little bit concerned about using something like this. This is a dry scalp treatment, relieves dryness, itchiness, and irritation. Um, but it has it basically like, almost like you put it on like hair dye. Like it has this little, little, tip oh okay all right well it's coming out ah, that's what she said okay you just take it i can't do it i can't show you because my hair is now dry but you just run it in a line a couple of places and i really just use it in the front areas and then sometimes in the back if i feel like my scalp is getting like really dry and itchy back here but you put it on after you get out of the shower with damp hair and just i let it air dry for a little bit before i blow dry don't go crazy just use a little bit but i was worried that it would leave my hair feeling oily that when i went to dry my hair i would feel like i had like oily and then it would weigh it down and that would make it look even thinner but it doesn't so if you are struggling with dry scalp or thinning hair, I really like both of these and that um, shampoo and conditioner, which is from Amazon. So I will link all of that stuff below. The other thing that helps, this is apparently gonna be a lot of hair stuff because y'all ask me about hair stuff a lot. So I figured I would share about this. Um, this is the Aquage Uplifting Foam. Have I shared about this before? Probably. I've been using it for quite a while. I absolutely love this stuff. It works so well. I just put it, like I make a little line with my fingernail, pull up my hair, spray it, spray it, you use it again when your hair is damp. So I put all this stuff in my hair when my hair is damp after I get out of the shower, then I style my hair and it's good to go for four or five days and then I use the products again. So um, yeah, anyways, I really love this stuff. It helps, it's sort of like a root boost, but it's one of the most effective root boosters that I've ever used. So. I warned you guys, we were gonna be talking about sort of superficial stuff that doesn't really matter, but it was gonna distract us and it was gonna be fun. Okay, so let's keep on the hair topic for a second. If you are like me and your gray hair is coming through, I watched one of our older videos on our vlog channel from like 2016 and my hair had grown out quite a bit. I hadn't had it dyed in a good long while and there was no gray hairs. Over the last three years, my hair has grayed to the point 
it's I've got a lot of gray hair, a lot more gray hair than I used to have. And some people embrace that. And at some point I probably will. I'm just not quite there yet. I'm not ready. So I use, and, and this is just a styling thing too. Like I love to wear headbands and use different hair accessories, especially if your hair is kind of dirty and you're trying to cover that up or you're trying to cover up uh, grown out roots or gray hair or just give a little something extra, a little pizzazz, headbands are the way to go. Now I could not find mine, which is irritating me I need to find it but I have one from noonday that I love and I'm gonna link it below because it has like some wiring built in so I might do a little thing on Instagram and show you guys like five different ways to wear this headband because you can tie it up like this you can tie it around the base of your ponytail there's just like so many different ways that you can wear this headband and it's so cute I'll link that one so you know which one I'm talking about this one I believe I just got it uh, or was it Target or maybe H&M kind of got like that turban type tie right here and this is one that I really love to use and just kind of put right here and then pull my hair up and give it a lot of volume in the back really love headbands i actually had ordered this one from carly jean they are one of my uh, favorite little uh, small shops everything i believe is made in la for the most part um, ethically sourced and all of that so i really love supporting carly jean their clothing is so good um, but this is it's like a scrunchie with a almost like a handkerchief type thing built in. They come apart so you can, you know, just use the scrunchie or whatever. But this is really cute to put your hair in a little low ponytail and then have this part hang down underneath. I think it's adorable. I, obviously I like cheetah print, so this I really like. And they actually released a headband this style, but with this cheetah print, so I went ahead and ordered that as well. I just, I really enjoy hair accessories and hats and things like that, especially right now when you're trying to cover up stuff. You know, not everybody is, not everybody cares, but I care. All right, so speaking of, we're gonna get through, like this is all the beauty stuff and then I have other stuff to share. Um, over the years, I have talked about this product a whole lot, but I feel like it just always deserves a good mention and that is the L'Oreal Lumi Glotion. This is in the medium shade. There's like a fair medium and I think there's one that's a little bit darker than this, but this is all I'm wearing today I'm for foundation. Like I have bronzer and blush on, but I'm not wearing any foundation. This is really, really great um, if you have done like I have and given yourself a little a little uh, pampering routine, a little sunless tanner. It's pretty sad that I'm so pale that this is me with some sunless tanner on. <laughs> um, but I will just use this and it just makes your skin really glowy and beautiful and I don't wear any foundation and I like that. My skin breathes a little bit more um, without foundation on and this looks beautiful under foundation. I am not saying that this is in place of, this has no coverage at all. So it's just for that like glowiness factor. But um, something's cold. I thought something was leaking on my leg, but it's just cold. Okay. Looks good under foundation. Looks good by itself. Just adds a glow to your skin. It's affordable drugstore product. I'm just having a moment where it's been warm here, okay? It's been like 70s, 80s. So I'm just embracing it and going with it and feeling those sort of spring, summer vibes. And, you know, we might be uh, stay, staying home, but I can still usher in those seasons and do things that make me feel like spring is here and summer is coming and just things I enjoy. If you guys have watched our vlog channel, you've heard my husband talk about this. <laughs> he loves this perfume. I bought this, I think, um, I can't remember. I think I got this during the Nordstrom anniversary sale because I know I bought it on sale because this stuff is expensive. It's really stupid expensive. It's the Tom Ford Soleil Blanc. I got the all over body spray because it was cheaper than the perfume. The perfume was just so expensive and I thought, I don't know if I want that. So let me just get, so I got the body spray, which was still expensive, but I did get it during, like I said, I believe it was the Nordstrom anniversary sale. So it was on sale, but this stuff, you guys, my husband loves it. Every time I spray it, he will come upstairs and he's like, I can smell it as soon as I'm at the bottom of the stairs. Like it smells so good. And he said basically that like, I wear perfume all the time that he likes and enjoys. This one to him is intoxicating. Like he just feels drawn to it, like a moth to a flame. So if you are trying to repel your significant other, don't wear this one. If you are trying to attract them, wear this one. If you ain't in the mood, don't wear this perfume. That's what I'm trying to say. I like it a lot. My husband likes it even more than I do. So people have been asking, because he was joking about it in our vlog the other day, and people were asking me, and I couldn't remember which what it was called. But Tom Ford, Soleil Blanc, I will link it. Um, yeah. Okay. 
I think that's it for like the beauty category. Uh, the other thing I wanted to mention in sort of the techie category, I have techie, these are not techie, but it relates to a computer. That's where I'm going with this. I've shared these multiple times. These are from Amazon, but they are my absolute favorite. And I have been wearing the mess out of these as I've been doing a lot more computer work lately. And um, even just when I'm going out and I wanna sort of protect my eyes a little bit when I'm going out to the grocery store and stuff and I don't, I don't normally wear glasses and I don't wanna wear sunglasses in the, the grocery store. So I will wear these to also try to sort of protect from some of the germ molecules, if you will, getting into my eyeballs. So they have like black and tortoise shell. I wanna say they're like $9 or $10. They work really well as just blue light blocking glasses um, and hopefully also germ blocking glasses. So I really like these, but I wanted to mention them. I've shared them a number of times, but everyone who's ordered them has told me how much they love them too. So it's, they're a good deal. Wanted to share those. Then the other thing that I wanted to share is, again, if you've watched our vlogs, you've seen that my husband and I have spent most of our days with our AirPods in. Now, I don't know if it's my ear shape. I don't know what it is, but the traditional AirPod shape and just the traditional Apple headphone shape, it literally cuts the inside of my ear. It hurts and like this part on the outside here is what I think does it, but I will have like little scabbed over cuts and it will occasionally, those scabs will come off and then it'll like bleed a little bit, not like losing blood, but just like, it's not good, okay? Nobody wants to be in pain. And I will literally like try to put them in and just like wince and I can't, I have to take them out because this shape, I don't know if I got tiny little ears or what the problem is, but they do not fit well. So I went online and my husband was like, well, I heard the Apple AirPod Pros are supposedly more comfortable. They fit in your ear better. And I was like, okay, well, maybe I'll go get those. Uh, I, I really wasn't too keen on that because I remembered these being expensive anyways. Well, I went to order the AirPod Pros and I want to say they were like $250. And I was like, no. I don't really wanna spend $250 right now. There's another video that we're gonna do soon. It might go before this one, I don't know, but it's a budgeting, like ways we're clamping down budgeting wise. So $250 for AirPod Pros, not in the budget currently during this crisis, okay? Just not in the budget. So I thought, well, let me see. And sure enough, I went on Amazon and they have these little silicone covers basically, all right? And you just slide your little AirPod in it and it gives it that extra little hook like would be on the more comfortable type of AirPods or, or you know, wireless headphones. And then it's got the little, the little part that kind of goes into your ear and your AirPod slides in it, okay? So it's much, much more comfortable, soft on your ears, does not cut my ears. It's a pain in the you know what, okay? Because they don't, you can't leave them on. It doesn't fit in the charger if you leave them on. So you have to put them on and off every time, which means, I, as a mother of eight children, not only have to keep eight children alive, but I have to keep these two little things from getting flushed down the toilet, eaten by a toddler, swallowed and crapped out by the dog. Who knows what will happen to these things? But I now protect these things like they're my new twin newborn babies, okay? Just my new little babies. I protect these with my life. They were very, very cheap. And so when I saw how cheap they are, I said to myself, just get those. If you hate them, then you, you know, you only wasted a few dollars and you can eventually get the AirPod Pros. If you like them, that's gonna save you $250. And it's, it, it's, a, it's a good temporary solution until budget opens back up and I decide I'm willing to spend $250 on AirPod Pros or like Bose headphone, wireless headphones or something else. But for now, as someone who pretty much always has their AirPods in while I'm doing chores, uh, while I'm doing yard work, anything inside, outside, whatever, just making lunch, cooking, whatever I'm doing that I don't need to be like present and speaking with someone, I am always listening to an audible book, a podcast, something of that nature. And this makes my AirPods not cut my ears and make them bleed. I mean, the AirPods and Apple, it's like one of those things where I'm like, listen, Apple, okay? We know that you guys are withholding all kinds of technology. We know that you have so much more technology than you release to us. You just trickle it out to us so that we wanna buy a new phone every year. I get that, okay? But can we, can we acknowledge that this is a poor design? I'm not the only person. If they make this product, it's because a lot of people don't like this and it hurts their ears. So maybe we could just make this softer, more comfortable, less sharp sharpness here to cut the ears. 
It's just, I'm kind of like, listen, you can make a phone that has no buttons on it and can recognize people's faces. And do you know what I did the other day? I didn't even know you could do this. I copied and pasted from my computer to my phone or vice versa. I copied something on my phone. And then when I right clicked the mouse on my computer, it pasted it. If you can do that, you can make an AirPod not slice someone's ears up like Freddy Krueger, okay? That's all I'm gonna say about that, Apple. Speaking of AirPods and the things that we listen to in them, well, actually, hold on. I did forget one thing that I wanted to show you guys. Now, I did talk about this before, but it deserves to be spoken about again because before, before I shared it with you as something that I had recently purchased and figured I was going to like. Well, I've been carrying it for the last month and now I am in love. This may be one of the, my favorite bags I have ever owned, okay? I have bought a couple of high-end bags, a, you know, some designer bags. I have a lot of different purses. I have a slight purse obsession. This may be one of the most practical, one of my favorite bags ever. It is a backpack. It is the right size for a backpack. You, it's not so big that you feel like a kid going to school it's not so small that you feel like Dora, where you're like, you know, chugging this little tiny backpack around with you everywhere. I don't like the mini backpacks. That is not my thing. It might be your thing, which is totally okay. It's just not my thing. I want a medium sized backpack. I don't want it so big that I can fit like a body in it. I just wanna be able to fit a few things I need. The reason that I love this one so much is because you have the option of wearing it like a backpack, which is great when you've got your toddlers, your little ones with you, and you need to be totally hands-free. But if I don't, and I just wanna carry like a regular bag, it just has this short top strap that might be the best freaking thing that has ever been put on a bag. I love this so much. The top is a snap closure. I just open it. It is not so deep that everything gets lost in the abyss in there, although it looks like it right now. It's just a few receipts, don't judge. It's just, it's the perfect size. It holds just enough. It's got the back zipper pouch there where you can throw in some lipstick or concealer or whatever and get to it quickly. It also has this front pouch right here where sometimes I stick my AirPods and then like right now I've got a Starbucks gift card in there. Just something I can slide in there real quick. Um, it's just truly, I love bags like this. This is from Noonday, okay? So this is made by artisans. You're supporting an ethical company that's doing wonderful things in the world that I love very much, uh, but you also get this cute, cute bag. And I, the, my favorite thing about their like leather bags like this is as you wear them, they soften up so much. I like it when they get a little bit beat up and you've got scratches and stuff on there and they get a little bit of character, you know? It doesn't look so perfect just add some character to it. And then this is a, a handkerchief from Noonday that I just tied on there. But, um, but Noonday bags are just truly some of the most beautiful, incredible, well, um, well designed, they hold up well. I just, I love Noonday bags, I always have. All right, so speaking of things I've been listening to in the old AirPods. I shared a little bit about this in my Q&A, so I'm just gonna make it very brief and I will leave them linked down below. I have been listening to, uh, I've listened to two and a half books by Annie Jacobson. Uh, she's an investigative reporter for the LA Times and she has really spent the last I don't even know, 10 or 15 years, investigating sort of into our government's secret programs, the sort of clandestine departments that have been created. And as these organizations declassify documents, as she's able to get information because of the Freedom of Information Act, she's really sort of sharing and pulling the veil back, if you will, on how some of these operations work how uh, our perception of them and what we think that they do and the good things that they've done are not always totally accurate. Uh, it's very interesting. I feel like she's pretty unbiased, not totally, no one is ever, I don't think, totally unbiased, but she feels pretty unbiased in that she makes a good argument as a reporter just to share with you, here's the information, make what you want of it. So like her book about Operation Paperclip, which is the uh, program that brought Nazi doctors to the US to work for us after, the, after World War II was over, we sort of had this secret project called Operation Paperclip, the public was sort of lied to and told these were not Nazis, these were the good Germans. And so the truth it was obviously that was not the truth. These were people that were high ranking um, doctors and stuff within the Reich. And so the whole book is just very, very fascinating at understanding how and our government did that, why they did that, 
you know, preemptive of what was going on with the Cold War and wanting to uh, sort of be prepared for anything and beat Russia in terms of weapons and intelligence and things like that. So that's sort of why we did that. So she sort of leaves it up to you to decide in the books after she explains. So the first book is about Area 51, the second book, Operation Paperclip, and then what I'm listening to now is called The Pentagon's Brain, and it's about DARPA. Uh, they, fun fact, are who created the internet. Um, so it, she leaves it really up to you to decide how you feel about the decisions that have been made. But her point is simply that like we as citizens should know what's going on. We should understand what we're involved in um, and then make our decisions from there about what we support, what we believe is ethical and right. And so I, her books are very meaty. They are very thick, big books with lots of information. And sometimes it's a little mind numbing because it is so much like names and names of operations and interviews with different people and stuff like that. And you kind of get it all like swirling around in your head and it's hard to make sense of. But if you can stick with it and just kind of follow along, she does a pretty good job of bringing everything together so that you sort of understand what's happening. Normally I would have more books to share with you because I normally do read more books than that, but because these books are so uh, meaty and there's just so much in them, they're long, uh, it's taken me a lot longer to get through. So I haven't gotten any farther, but I have a number of good books coming up on my list that I'm excited to read after I finish. Um, it's She has Pentagon's Brain, which I need to finish, and then the other one of hers that I wanna read is Surprise, Kill, Vanish, and that's her newest book. Um, and so anyways, I really want to read that one too. So I think once I get through all my Annie Jacobson books, then I will move back into some of my more traditional type books that I read. To be honest, I'm just really, really sucked into those right now. As far as podcasts go, I haven't really been like hook, line, and sinker into any one particular podcast. It's really just been more... Uh, episodes, certain things that intrigue me, certain people. Like I did go look for Annie Jacobson and listen to some interviews um, with her. Shameless plug, my husband and I have a new podcast and a new episode just came out this week as well where we talk about anti-fragile parenting and the reality of the risks our kids are actually facing. Um, and how we parent in light of that information. And it was actually a really good conversation because we didn't always see eye to eye on things for sure when it came to what we felt like was safe for our kids and not safe for our kids. Uh, but we even talked about like our scariest experiences as kids and my husband's was a doozy. I always thought that mine was scary, but my husband's was a real doozy. So I will leave our podcast link down below if you wanna go listen to that. But I don't really have much in the way of like fashion things to share with you guys this month. I did get an order from thread up and I got a few uh, tops that I really like. So I think I might do like a spring style video or something. I'm just always so hesitant to do like fashion content because it's just not the type of content that I usually make. And I feel like like five people will watch it. And those kind of videos take so long to, uh, to make. And it's like, if nobody cares, you know, do I really want to waste my time doing that? But I don't know, would you guys just rather see a haul or would you rather see like a lookbook kind of thing where I style the pieces or would you rather just see a haul? Like I said, I got some pieces from Thread Up, um, and I got a couple of things from Everlane. And so I still know that I, I want to sit down and share with you guys some of my favorite ethical clothing brands. And I got a few things from Carly Jean as well. So um, maybe I can do that as a combined video, like share with you some of my favorite brands. And then here's some of the items I've gotten recently from those brands. That way it's sort of like a combination. I just, I don't feel like fashion content is necessarily my thing. So. That is it though. I can't think of anything else that I have to share. That's it for today's video. I hope that you guys enjoyed. I hope that this was a little break from all of the big, heavy, hard things that are going on. Sometimes it's okay to like, just take a break from that and let's talk about some silly, shallow, doesn't really matter, um, headbands and AirPods and glasses and lotion and hair spray or whatever it is. So yeah, hopefully you guys enjoyed this video. We all got a little break and I would strongly encourage you if you're feeling it to go and like give yourself, like pluck your own eyebrows, wax off your mustache. I've done that already too. Give yourself a little spray tan, put on some red lipstick, paint your nails or pink lipstick or whatever your favorite, whatever your like power color is, whatever lipstick makes you feel really good. Put that on. Do your makeup, even if you have nowhere to go, no one else will see you, but you and your cat, or just you and your spouse, or you and your kids, or whatever the situation is, make yourself feel good. If you do it, 
tag me, okay? Go on Instagram and tag me if you do that. I wanna see because sometimes we just need to feel good for the sake of feeling good and that's what I'm doing today. So that's it for today's video. I hope that you guys enjoyed. I will see you again very soon. Bye.